Hi, my name's Nick Patel. I'm a consultant uh, interventional cardiologist in London. So what is interventional cardiology? Well, it's, the, it's a part of cardiology that uses various invasive uh, technologies and techniques uh, to investigate and treat uh, a number of important uh, cardiac conditions, heart conditions, uh, such as coronary artery disease. Now that includes uh, heart attacks. Uh, it also uh, involves treatment of you know, um, heart valve problems and other structural heart disease. So what do I mean by invasive? Well, usually this involves gaining access to uh, the body's arterial system, uh, either from the wrist, the radial artery, or from the top of the leg, the femoral artery. Uh, or we can do some in, uh, interventions uh, via one of the major veins of the body, uh, less commonly. Uh, what a patient uh, may have during that time is some sedation to uh, take, um, you know, take the edge off things. Um, and uh, rarely, sometimes we use uh, general anaesthetic. Most often, however, it's just done under a local anaesthetic to numb the access where we get into the uh, heart arteries or, or get into the heart, uh, body's arteries. Um, and um, and often we use x-ray guidance to allow our to, uh, various equipment to work its way to the heart and treat and investigate the heart. Uh, sometimes we use ultrasound, echocardiography, to look at the structure of the heart and where we need to be. It, it means that um, various treatments can be performed on the heart without open heart surgery. Uh, but of, of course, we need to be meticulous in our thoughts about, you know, choosing the best option for the patient, balancing the kind of risks and benefits, considering the, uh, the details of the problems, and also in the influence that other medical conditions may have on that person and the influence it may have on the cardiac condition. Uh, so central to all of this is the de decision making that involves the patient and an open discussion about what steps we should be taking. So interventional cardiology, a um, mechanism that uses technolo technology to treat cardiac conditions. Uh, invasive uh, investigations, of course, involve the, the techniques that I've just talked about, where we uh, are gain access to the heart uh, using local anesthetic sedation um, and using the major blood vessels of the heart arteries to uh, gain access and look at the heart often directly um, with the guidance of x-rays and other um, technologies. Uh, this helps us understand the structure and function of the heart in particular detail. Non-invasive assessments of the heart involve ECG, monitoring of uh, uh, patients with either long, um, long monitoring, uh, several days of monitoring of ECG, ECGs or blood pressure. Uh, it can also uh, involve an ultrasound assessment of the heart where uh, an echocardiogram is performed, a, a non-invasive look at the heart without um, gaining access to the body. Uh, this is often a fantastic way to look at the structure and function of the heart without um, any uh, invasive approach. Um, other non-invasive assessments of the heart include um, CT. Uh, we are able to assess um, the heart arteries in particular with, with quite good detail uh, in a non-invasive way like this using CT. We can look at the um, at the um, structure and function of the heart using a, uh, an MRI scan. Uh, this, this is often used to look for particular heart conditions. And also um, during that time, we can stress the heart with an agent that then allows us to uncover any uh, potential narrowings of the heart arteries that affect the heart function. Uh, stress echocardiography is another way of looking at the heart where we look at the heart at rest and then ask the patient to either exercise or have a um, drug to stress the heart in patients that cannot exercise. 
uh, again, to look at the effects of uh, exercise on the heart and the potential for any narrowings of the heart arteries uh, causing angina. So you sh one should always ask, you know, your cardiologist uh, and discuss the merits of the different approaches in investigating the heart. Uh, there are clear benefits um, and merits of each investigation, and those should be looked at in detail. There are um, and, and guidance as to which test, which test best suits a patient. Um, are based on uh, clinical features such as symptoms and, exa and examination findings, but also the influence of other medical conditions um, as well as the patient's choice. So there are, have been leaps and bounds uh, in the uh, advances in interventional cardiology over the last decade. Uh, broadly speaking, interventional cardiology is about uh, the assessment and treatment of coronary artery disease and other structural heart problems, starting with um, coronary artery disease. Uh, you know, we have um, developed various techniques to look within the heart arteries uh, with ultrasound and with a, a light telescope called OCT. Uh, this gives us exquisite detail and understanding of how heart artery problems are affecting the function of that artery and the flow of blood, but also how that might be affecting our treatment options as well. There have been uh, advances in how we manage uh, to treat heart artery disease with uh, techniques that can help us deal with some of the more difficult aspects of, of, um, of narrowings in the heart arteries, such as how we deal with a uh, very tough material in the artery, often made up of calcium. So how we modify that calcium, we've got special uh, tools to help us with that. Uh, there is a um, technique by which we can break up calcium uh, and tough material using a, a balloon that emits a particular frequency of sound wave that can break up calcium. There is uh, various other techniques using um, uh, diamond tip spinning um, drills, as it were, to uh, create uh, a passage uh, and break up calcium. Uh, there have been advances in the techniques that we use to, uh, to deal with heart artery, uh, heart artery disease that affects the, the uh, branch point of arteries and the techniques used in stenting for that. We have made uh, ad advances in, in how we assess the blood flow in the heart artery with the, ass with the assessment of coronary physiology. And often, uh, and, and now we're able to assess whether people have not only just um, major heart artery problems, but we can also look at the, some of the smaller arteries of the heart and the function of those. Uh, and, and look at patients that are suffering with microvascular dysfunction as well, using assessments of coronary physiology. Uh, and then um, there have been really quite, uh, really quite important advances in uh, various devices we use to support the heart whilst we um, treat heart arteries and do other procedures on the heart. We're able to introduce uh, devices into the heart to help um, the heart function uh, to pump and supply blood to the body uh, whilst we are treating um, the heart arteries. Um, and so, so sicker patients are able to undergo this procedure or patients that are acutely unwell are able to undergo this procedure more safely. The second arm to the advances are, are, are the huge advances we've made in structural intervention to the heart, uh, particularly looking at um, the treatment we offer patients with heart valve disease. So patients that have disease of the, uh, for example, aortic valve, the a very common condition uh, affecting the heart, um, the, the aortic valve is when that can get narrowed up. It doesn't open as well. And we can treat that now using uh, a, a, um, a collapsed valve. We can deliver to the to uh, into position of the of your of one's diseased valve, uh, and actually deploy a, a, a new valve in in place. Uh, 
uh, and that's called TAVI. Uh, and there have been huge advances in that ref refinement of that technique and also um, mechanisms to make that procedure safer over the last decade. Um, other structural heart disease advances um, have been involved, have been um, in the mitral valve space where people suffering with a leaky valve, such as a leaky mitral valve, can, this can be treated using various uh, technologies um, that help us to um, treat that heart valve to allow it to close properly. Um, so these are, we, we've made and are, I hope, making huge advances in, in this sphere to help patients um, uh, have different treatment options to open heart surgery. So huge advances in interventional cardiology have been achieved over the last decade. And this really means that a wider group of patients are able to um, be offered treatments. Patients pre historically may have been turned down for treatment, or surgical, uh, based on risk and other uh, medical conditions. And now we are able to refine our we have refined our techniques such that some, some of these patients can be offered a, a, a treatment for their condition. It also means that, you know, uh, sicker patients, patients that are presenting to us in an acute way, either from heart attack or other conditions, are able to undergo treatments more safely. Um, importantly, the... Uh, treatment of these patients uh, in a more uh, meticulous, precise and guided way has allowed us to achieve better outcomes, you know, better outcomes for our patients. So, of course, all of these treatments have risks, they have benefits, and, and one should consider all the options when making a decision as to what treatment plan to take. Uh, and this should be discussed in detail with your cardiologist to ensure that, that, that you, the patient, are happy with the proposed plan.